Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing? Man, it's Anelli here. Hey, what's going on, everyone? How we doing? Man, it's Anelli here. Today, I want to put up a drill, one of the drills that we use. Um, and I want to show you, I want to show you a couple of things. I threw this up on Instagram uh, not too long ago. And... Every time I throw this type of drill on, or really almost any drill that's a little unconventional, I get a lot of interesting feedback. I'll get a lot of people are like, man, that's a great looking drill. That's really cool. And I'll get some people who are like, this is the worst drill ever. Are you trying to ruin hitters? You're an idiot. <laughs> a lot of interesting stuff. Now, um, if you know me, you know that I'm not someone that just does things just to be different or... Um, you also know that I don't take players' careers lightly. I'm not just going to do a drill that I think is going to ruin a player. Um, I've thought pretty hard about these drills. I've worked with thousands and thousands and thousands of players. Um, but I wanted to put this up here for a little bit further explanation and to show you guys one of the things that we do. Um, and every player is unique and different, and we do different drills with different players depending on what they need. For instance, so here, here's a college player. His name's Nick Palma. Plays at UMass Boston. Has issues with, and these are continuous issues that he has throughout his career, of being too steep to the ball. When I say too steep, I mean his attack angle often gets negative so he'll swing down on the ball too much he'll get forward you can call it lunging whatever you want to call it he gets to his front leg to this leg too early too much too often um, and it's caused him to be inconsistent he'll miss balls that he feels like he shouldn't he hits too many ground balls or more than he wants to, especially to the pull side, has a tough time getting the ball in the air, has a tough time hitting extra base hits. If he gets a hit, it's a single. Hasn't been as, as consistent as he wants to be. And so looking at his swing, you know, he talks to me about this, what's happening, and then I look at his swing. And it's pretty easy to see the heavy shift forward. It's easy to see the negative attack angle, the barrel not turning up into the ball. The barrel goes from out to in too much. And so this is one drill over here on the left I'm going to show you right now that we use to exaggerate some of the things that we want to do. Turning the barrel behind the ball early. Getting the lead arm to work up. Right. So if you think about a, a swing that's going to work down, the lead arm is going to work down. The knob is going to work forward and down too quickly you're going to come what i call over the top so the swing is going to be from over the top not from more from behind and from under and that, and the other problem again is shifting into the right leg way too early or too much and so we put them in this position right here where they can feel their back leg working where they go light on their front leg so they can't shift early. Now, this doesn't mean some people see this and go, oh my, he's he's not going to have any weight ever on his on his front leg, ever, 100% on his back leg, the entire swing. Oh my, he's going to swing straight up in a game. Oh my, this is the worst. So listen, I've done this drill with tons of players. You exaggerate in this drill. This drill forces you to feel certain things. I can't, I mean, I could shift into my right leg early and do this drill, but because that's an issue of his, we fight against that as much as we can, staying around this leg. Now, this device right here in between his arms, it just keeps his arms the same distance apart. What happens is this arm wants to work down and this arm wants to work down normally, and so the swing wants to work down. Well, this device doesn't let you just work both arms down. It's going to force this one arm to work up as this arm works under okay and so we're trying to turn the knob up as much as we can I, I tell him I want him to feel like this is working up and I want the lead arm to work up I want everything to turn deep behind him 
And so we get into this position, we pull back, we hold it here, and then we try to tilt back. I've made videos about tilting back. I don't want the right shoulder to pull hard to the right. On this drill, I literally want him to work straight back with his upper body. And I want him to think like he's going to turn the knob straight up. That's what I tell him. Sometimes when I say it to people, like, oh, my, that's horrible. Like, I'm never going to be able to hit like this in a game. Well, it's actually interesting. When I do this drill and I flip them balls, they hit the ball. They, once they do it right, they crush the ball. But their swing is not going to look exactly like this in the game. I typically say that you're going to have your swing that you have right now, which you don't like, which is which you're unsuccessful with, which is the reason why you're coming to see me. And then you have where you're going to end up. Or, excuse me, then you have this swing. So you have your swing right now, then you have this swing. And you're probably going to fall someplace in between. Right? It's going to be a, a not a blend, but you're going to fall somewhere in between. Because we're going to allow you, eventually, we're going to bring this right leg back into the equation. And I don't want you to shift into it early. I don't want you to just lunge forward. But it's going to be a little bit more involved than it is in this drill where it's zero involved. And all of a sudden when that happens, your swing starts to look a little bit more like this. So like this is this is directly after we did this drill. right? So it's very quick. And he already could see big time changes in his path and the way his upper body was working. Like, typically, you're going to see this arm working down more. You're going to see the path down more. You're going to see him on his front leg more. You're not going to see him behind the ball as much. But after talking a lot and doing a couple other drills, he started to get his barrel turned behind the ball. And he instantly said, that's harder than any ball I've hit. And all of a sudden, the ball started going on a line and in the air more, and he wasn't hitting as many ground balls, especially to the pull side. So he felt it really, really quickly. This drill is just one of the drills, right? There's a thousand drills out there. But this is one drill that gave him a feel for what he was trying to do. Then he took this feel right here, and he took it over to here. And took pretty good swings. So there's, so, there's something for exaggeration in drills, as long as you're doing it right. Now, this drill, here's the other thing I'll say. It's not all about just the drills. You can do any drill improperly. Right? Like he, so he could do this drill, and he could, before he does this, he could shift all his weight to his right leg. He could take his right shoulder out like this. He could do a bunch of those things, which would essentially make the drill useless. So in every drill, there's certain keys like, we don't get into this drill and just say, okay, here's a bag, now hit it. If you do that, you could do this drill totally wrong, and it could do nothing for your swing. It might, it may, it could make your swing worse, possibly. But when you have, you know, I give them three, four key things to think about. And I'm also watching the drill the whole time. And if they do something incorrectly, then we correct it. But there's certain things they want to do, and then I tell them exaggerate it. I say, go all in, 100% on anything I tell you here. Just do it. Now, Nick knows me, and he also has a pretty good understanding for hitting, so he goes all in on the drill. Some people, they're a little tentative, right? They'll even come to me because they're really struggling. You know, oh, I had the worst year of my life. Oh, I haven't been able to hit in three years. Okay try this right here. Oh, that feels weird. And some people don't buy in and do it 100%. Well, then they won't see it translate over to their swing at all. If you don't, in my experience, if you don't buy in and do the drill correctly, but, but do it 100%. So if I tell you to go all around this leg and no weight on this leg, or if I tell you to literally try to turn the knob straight up in the air, or if I tell you to try to tilt straight back, and you only do it a little bit, then the swing, nothing gets into the swing. The swing will look, they'll take swings and it looks exactly the same that they've been doing for the last year or two years or however long where they told me that they've been struggling. That's the reason they're coming in. So, um, I wanted to show this because sometimes people see this 
and then they think that the swing is going to look like that. And the swing doesn't, it's not going to look like this. Again, this is a drill, um, but it's meant to make you feel certain things, make you exaggerate certain things, so that hopefully you can get some of those things into your swing. Just going and taking your swing, you know, sometimes people think, you know, I'm just going to go and hit more. Well, I've really been struggling. I'm just going to go hit more. Now, maybe you find your way out of it, but if you have some issues in your swing, and you have issues with the way your body's moving, well, then just going and taking swings is just basically going to continue to wire in, to wire in what you're already doing. There's not going to be any changes. And so you can take a whole lot of swings, but I've seen plenty of people get worse or stay the same. Most people, I would say, most people either stay the same or get worse the more swings they take because they don't have anything they're working on. If they're already struggling, they're just building more of that that type of movement, the movement that's causing them to struggle. They're just hardwiring that into them, into their body even more. Um, so hopefully this makes sense. I've made videos on exactly how we do this drill, so you can go and check those out. But I wanted to show you an interesting example because I just put it up on Instagram and, and got a lot of... Yeah, I got good and bad, which I guess is social media. But I wanted to be able to explain a little bit more instead of just being able to throw up a clip and be able to type a few words. So hopefully this helps you out. Let me know if you have any questions. Comment in the section below. Subscribe to the channel. All that good stuff. And we'll talk to you later.